Today's topic is Hilbert Adjoint Operator. Here we mean Hilbert Adjoint Operator of a bounded linear operator on a Hilbert space. Today we will prove a very important theorem also called existence theorem which ensures that there always exists a Hilbert adjoint operator for a bounded linear operator on a Hilbert space and we will show that that operator is also unique. First we shall prove a lemma which will be used in the main theorem. Lemma states that let x be an inner product space if inner product of yx is equal to inner product of zx for every x in x then we have to show that y is equal to z. Let us prove this lemma as it is given that inner product of yx is equal to inner product of zx for every x in x. This implies that inner product of yx minus inner product of zx is equal to 0 for every x in x and this implies that in a product of y minus z and x is equal to 0 for every x in x by the property of inner product and since this holds for every x in x and we know that as y and z are belonging to x so y minus z is also an element of x and so we can replace x by y minus z then we have in a product of y minus z y minus z is equal to 0 and this implies that norm of y minus z square is equal to 0 and this implies y minus z is equal to 0 that is y is equal to z. Now we shall prove a corollary if inner product of z x is equal to 0 for every x in x then z is equal to 0. Uh, let us prove this corollary as inner product of zx is equal to 0 for every x in x then we can write um, inner product of 0x in place of 0 because inner product of 0x is equal to 0. So uh, this implies that inner product of zx is equal to inner product of 0x for every x in x and so by above lemma we have z is equal to 0. Now we have a very important theorem called existence theorem which states that let h1 and h2 be Hilbert spaces over field k and t from h1 to h2 be a bounded linear operator then there exists a unique bounded linear operator t star from h2 to h1 such that inner product of tx and y is equal to inner product of x and t star y for every x in h1 and for every y in h2. Moreover, norm of t star is less than or equal to norm of t. Here we note that the inner product tx and y is in h2 because for x in h1, tx is in h2 and y is in h2. So, inner product in the left hand side is in h2 and the inner product in the right hand side is in h1 as x and t star y both are belonging to h1. Let us prove this theorem as we want to find a bounded linear operator from t star uh, t star from h2 to h1 so we want to find a mapping from h2 to h1 so for each element of h2 we want to find some uh, unique element in h1 so to find such a function for uh, we find uh, we define for each fixed y in h2 we define a scalar valued function f y from h1 to k as f y of x is equal to inner product of t x y for every x in h1. Uh, why we are defining such a function? Because if y belongs to h2 
and uh, we define my mapping f y uh, from h1 to k and if we show that f y is a bounded linear operator on h1 then f y belongs to h1 star and uh, by these Trache representation theorem we can find an element uh, uh, a unique element in h1 corresponding to this f y so ultimately for each y in h2 we find an a unique element in h1 so we uh, will be able to define a function from h2 to h1 so in this way uh, the first uh, we need to prove that fy is a bounded linear operator fy is linear first we show that fy is linear for x1 x2 in h1 and alpha beta in k fy of alpha x1 plus beta x2 is equal to by definition this is an product of t of alpha x1 plus beta x2 and y and this is equal to since t is a bounded linear operator so t is linear so using linearity here we have inner product of alpha t of x1 plus beta t of x2 and y and since inner product is linear in first argument so we have here alpha times inner product of t x1 y plus beta times inner product t x2 y and in a product of t x1 y is f y of x1 and in a product of t x2 y is f y x2 so we have here alpha times f y of x1 plus beta times f y of x2 so we have shown that f y is linear now we show that f y is bounded for each x in h1 mod of f y of x is equal to mod of inner product of t x and y by definition of f y and y surge in reality is less than or equal to norm of t x into norm of y and since t is a bounded linear operator so norm of t x is less than or equal to norm of t into norm of x and so we can write here this is less than or equal to norm of t into norm of y and into norm of x that means f y is bounded f y is linear this is bounded and so f y is a bounded linear operator on h1 hence f y belongs to h1 star by these representation theorem there exists a unique element y star here we are writing uh, that unique element by y star y star belongs to h1 such that f y of x is equal to in a product of x y star for every x in h1 from these representation theorem we have this result and since f y of x is equal to in a product of t x y so we have in a product of t x y is equal to in a product of x y star for every x in h1 and from ray's representation theorem we also know that norm of f y is equal to norm of y star for each y in h2 we get a unique element y star in h1 which satisfies the condition that is in a product of t x y is equal to in a product of x y star for every x in h1 hence we get a mapping which we are denoting here by t star from h2 to h1 such that t star of y is equal to y star for every y in h2 because we have shown that for each y in h2 there exists a unique element y star in h1 so we are able to define such a mapping so from 2 we get 
inner product of T X and Y is equal to inner product of X T star Y. Here we are replacing Y star by T star Y. And this is for every X in H1 and for every Y in H2. This establishes existence of a mapping T star from H2 to H1 satisfying fourth condition that is in a product of T X Y is equal to in a product of X T star Y. Now we show that T star is a bounded linear operator. Let us prove that T star is linear. For Y1 and Y2 in H2 and for alpha beta in K, in a product of X, T star alpha Y1 plus beta Y2 is equal to by property 4, we have in a product of T X alpha Y1 plus beta Y2 for every X in H1. And since in a product is conjugate linear in second argument, so this is equal to complex conjugate of alpha into inner product of Tx y1 plus complex conjugate of beta into inner product of Tx y2 for every x in h1. And then uh, using the fourth property satisfying by T star, we have complex conjugate of alpha into inner product of x T star y1 plus complex conjugate of beta into inner product of x T star y2 for every x in h1 and since inner product is, is conjugate linear in second argument so here we have inner product of x alpha t star y1 plus inner product of x beta t star y2 for every x in h1 and then using the property of inner product we have inner product of x alpha t star y1 plus beta t star y2 for every x in h1. Now, using lemma, then we have in a product, uh, then we have t star of alpha y1 plus beta y2 is equal to alpha t star y1 plus beta t star y2. Hence, t star is linear. Now, we show that t star is bounded. For each y in h2, norm of t star y is equal to norm of y star since t star y is equal to y star and by this representation theorem norm of y star is equal to norm of f y and we have shown that mod of f y of x is less than or equal to norm of t into norm of y into norm of x for every x in h1 and so mod of f y of x uh, divided by norm of x is less than or equal to norm of t into norm of y for every x in h1 where x is not equal to 0. If we take supremum of mod of f y of x divided by norm of x such that x belongs to h1 and x is not equal to 0 then this is less than or equal to norm of t into norm of y. And by definition of norm of a bounded linear functional, we have this is norm of f y is less than or equal to norm of t into norm of y. And um, um, if we use sixth relation and fifth relation, then we get norm of t star y is less than or equal to norm of t into norm of y for every y in H2. So, um, we have proved that T star is bounded. And from this relation, we also have norm of T star Y divided by norm of Y is less than or equal to norm of T for every Y in H2 where Y is not equal to 0. If we take supremum of all these values, that is supremum of norm of T star Y divided by norm of Y, such that y belongs to H2 and y is not equal to 0, then this is less than or equal to norm of t. And this implies that norm of t star is less than or equal to norm of t. 
Hence, there exists a bounded linear operator T star from H2 to H1 such that inner product of Txy is equal to inner product of x T star y for every x in H1 and for every y in H2. And we have also shown that norm of T star is less than or equal to norm of T. It remains to show that T star is unique. If possible, let there be a bounded linear operator S from H2 to H1 such that inner product of Txy is equal to inner product of X Sy for every X in H1 and for every Y in H2. And since inner product of Txy is equal to inner product of X T star Y, so we have inner product of x t star y is equal to inner product of x s y for every x in h1 and for every y in h2. And, and we can write here inner product of x t star y minus inner product of x s y is equal to 0 for every x in h1 for every y in h2. And so we have here this is equal to inner product of x t star y minus Sy is equal to 0 for every x in H1 and for every y in H2. And this implies from the corollary which we have proved earlier. This is equal to, uh, this implies that T star y minus Sy is equal to 0 for every y in H2. And this implies that T star y is equal to Sy for every y in H2. And so, these two operators are equal, that is T star is equal to S. Hence, T star is uni. Now, we have the definition of Hilbert adjoint operator. Let us define it. Let H1 and H2 be Hilbert spaces and T from H1 to H2 be a bounded linear operator. Then, the bounded linear operator T star from H2 to H1, satisfying inner product of T, X and Y is equal to inner product of X and T star Y for every X in H1 and for every Y in H2 is called Hilbert adjoint operator of T. That is, for bounded linear operator T, there exists operator T star from H2 to H1 Satisfying some condition is called Hilbert adjoint operator of T. Now we know that as T star from H2 to H1 is a bounded linear operator, and so its Hilbert adjoint operator T star of star that is T double star from H1 to H2 exists and is a bounded linear operator which satisfies inner product of T star y x is equal to inner product of y T double star x for every x in H1 and for every y in H2. Thank you.